سوره النحل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اتى امر الله فلا تستعجلوا سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون ينزل الملائكة بالروح من أمره على من يشاء على من يشاء من عباده أن أنذروا خلق السماوات والأرض بالحق تعالى عما يشركون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful The command of Allah is coming, so be not impatient for it What Allah has decided What He has decreed, it is certainly going to come. So be not impatient for it. Exalted is He and high above what they associate with Him. He sends down the angels with the inspiration of His command upon whom He wills of His servants, telling them, warn that there is no deity except Me, so fear Me. He created the heavens and earth in truth for a purpose. High is He above what they associate with Him. He is high above, free from any imperfection. And He doesn't suffer from the idols or from the partners that are associated with Him, meaning it does not harm Him at all. He created man from a sperm drop, then at once He is a clear adversary. There was a time when every human being was nothing except but a drop of liquid. And then eventually... A human being grows and grows. And then when he is born, what happens? The child, how does he speak? Barely a complete sentence. Barely a clear word. And then what happens? فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Then he becomes a clear adversary, arguing about Allah. وَالْأَنْعَامَ خَلَقَهَا And the grazing livestock, he has created for you. In them is warmth. Meaning you get warmth from their skin, from their fur, from their wool, and numerous other benefits, the food, the clothing, and from them you eat. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا جَمَالٌ And for you in them is the enjoyment of beauty when you bring them in for the evening and when you send them out to pasture. Meaning that scene when the animals are walking away or coming back, that scene itself is so beautiful. And they carry your loads to a land you could not have reached except with difficulty to yourselves. Indeed, your Lord is kind and merciful. That He created these animals for you, for your service. Otherwise, you would have to carry everything yourself. And even today, there are many places on earth which you cannot reach on a plane, on a helicopter. You cannot reach on a car, on a jeep. No, you can only go on a mule, on a donkey, on a horse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided these creatures for our benefit. And He created the horses, mules, and donkeys for you to ride and as adornment. And He creates that which you do not know. You know, it's amazing. When you see those policemen on uh, horses, what's the point? Like seriously, what's the point? It's just adornment. Right? So Allah says Himself, that we have created these animals for you so that you can ride and it's also adornment. It looks nice. وَيَخْلُقُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ and, and He will create that which you do not know. Meaning other means of transportation that will come after you. Now what do we see here? When Allah has created these animals for us, whether it is the horses, the mules, or it is the, the grazing livestock, we benefit from them. What should we do in return? What should we do? First of all, acknowledge that this is from Allah. Believe that we have this because Allah gave it. He created it. Remember Him. Remember the source. Remember the giver. And thank Him. Be grateful to Him. Be grateful when you drink milk. Be grateful when you eat meat. Be grateful when you, inshallah, will wear your leather jacket or your woolen sweaters made from camel wool or, or sheep wool or something like that. Right? Be grateful. Your shoes even, they're lined with these things. 
Isn't that? So let's be grateful. Let's not forget that these, we are enjoying them because Allah provided them. And secondly, let us be considerate of the rights of these creatures also. Allah has created them for our use, not for abuse. The Prophet ﷺ, he passed by a camel, and he said that fear Allah regarding these mute animals. Meaning these animals, they cannot talk to you. They cannot tell you with their words what they don't like or what they need. So fear Allah regarding these. Ride them when they are in a good condition and feed them when they are in good condition also. Meaning, don't ride them when they are unwell, when they have an injury. Be merciful to them. The Prophet ﷺ also said, ride on these animals when they are sound and leave them sound and don't make them chairs for yourselves. Don't make them chairs for yourselves. What does that mean? That you're just sitting, you're making the camel stand and sitting on it so that you can chat with the other person. We don't have as many camels, but at least we have horses. So don't use a horse as a chair. That you're making the horse stand, and you're sitting and chatting. No, it's not fair to the creature that it's being used as a piece of furniture. It feels your burden. Just because it cannot say anything, doesn't mean that you can abuse it. And upon Allah is the direction of the right way. And among the various paths are those deviating. And if He willed, He could have guided you all. Meaning if He wanted, He could have forced guidance on you. But He has given you the choice to see what you select for yourself. It is He who sends down rain from the sky. This is also His planning. From it is drink, and from it is foliage in which you pasture animals. Water that comes down from the sky, I mean that is something that we drink. Yes, we don't drink the rainwater directly, but that water that falls down, it enters into rivers and streams and then reservoirs, and yes, it gets filtered, and then we end up drinking it. I mean, it's coming from somewhere. When you turn your tap on, the water came from somewhere. Who made that? Who sent that? Allah did. But we take all of these blessings for granted. And in the same water, from it also, there is foliage, there is plants, vegetation, that the animals eat, and then you eat the animals. He causes to grow for you thereby the crops, olives, palm trees, grapevines, and from all the fruits. Indeed, and that is a sign for a people who give thought. Fruit salads. Hmm? Enjoying them every day? Or not? At iftar time? Are you enjoying your fruit salad? A variety of various fruits, various colors, you know, tossed together in, in one bowl? Think. This came from somewhere. Allah made it. When you're peeling it, don't just peel it quickly, quickly. Look, take time to feel it, to touch it, to look at it. Admire the pattern, the color, the fragrance. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ For people who give thought. So let's give thought. Let's think. And He has subjected for you the night and the day and the sun and the moon and the stars are subjected by His command. Indeed in that are signs for people who reason, who think. That all of this is here, where is it going? Where did it come from? Where am I going? And He has subjected whatever He multiplied for you on the earth of varying colors, of varying categories. Indeed, and that is a sign for people who remember. In ذَلِكَ لَآيَةٍ This is coming up again and again. So we should take a lesson from these things. Not that we use them while we close our eyes without even reflecting. Think. Think about the sign of the night when you go out for taraweeh at night. Think. Admire the day, look at the moon, the stars, and everything in the earth. And what is the conclusion that we should reach? That the creator, the planner, the manager, the owner is who? Who? Allah Azza wa Jal. You see, when a person reflects on Allah's creation, then what does he remember? Who does he remember? Allah. You remember Allah. And when you remember Allah, only then can you become shakir of Allah. Only then can you truly be grateful to Allah. Gratitude results from this. Gratitude results from appreciating the creation of Allah. That, Ya Allah, you made this too? Wow. You made this pomegranate as well? Unique flavors, unique textures. When you give thought, when you take time to appreciate these little, little things, and these are not little by the way, but when you notice these things, then you appreciate the maker. Then you appreciate the designer, the owner, the provider. But it has to be with the dhikr of Allah, with the remembrance of Allah. Because there are many people who are studying, researching, observing all of these things, but without remembering Allah. All of their research, does that give them faith? Does that produce iman in their hearts? Not at all. 
and it is he who subjected the sea for you to eat from it, tender meat, and to extract from it ornaments which you wear, pearls. And you see the ships plowing through it, and he subjected it that you may seek of his bounty, and perhaps you will be grateful. So when you wear your pearls, be thankful to Allah. You see, everything is for free. Allah has given so much to us for free. What is it that we need to do in return? Be grateful. Be His servants. And He has cast into the earth firmly set mountains, lest it shift with you, and made rivers and roads that you may be guided. Meaning through the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these natural pathways, enabling us to travel from one place to the other and not get lost in the way. And this way we get to explore different places. And landmarks also. And by the stars, they are guided. Meaning in the night time, when the signs of the earth are hidden, they are concealed by darkness, then Allah has kept signs in the sky, so that we are not lost. Then is He who creates, like one who does not create. So will you not be reminded? And if you should count the favors of Allah, you could not enumerate them. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. Wallahu ya'lamu ma tusirruna wa ma tu'linun. And Allah knows what you conceal and what you declare. He knows all our sins, yet He keeps giving us blessing after blessing. And those they invoke other than Allah create nothing. And they themselves are created. They are in fact dead not alive and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected anything that is worshipped besides Allah what is it? it's makhluq it's creation and when it's creation it has a much lesser status it is weak it has its deficiencies and Allah says over here they are dead especially the people the human beings who died ages ago but still people go to their graves and they pray to them Allah says they are dead Why would you dedicate your worship to them? If they cannot even help themselves, if they don't even know when they'll be resurrected, when they can come out of the grave, how can they help you? So what is the conclusion of all of this? Ilahukum ilahu wahid. Your God is only, only one God. But those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts are disapproving and they are arrogant. Assuredly, Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare. Indeed, He does not like the arrogant. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْتَكْبِرِينَ Underline this. Allah does not like the arrogant people. Such people can never draw close to Allah. What is it that Allah likes in His servants? Humility, not pride. And when it is said to them, what has your Lord sent down? They say legends of the former peoples. This is their pride. that they may bear their own burdens in full on the day of resurrection. And some of the burdens of those whom they misguide without knowledge, unquestionably, evil is that which they bear. Those before them had already plotted, but Allah came at their building from the foundations. So the roof fell upon them from above them, and the punishment came to them from where they did not perceive. Because this was all a plot of the mushrikeen, right? That to say Qur'an is stories of the people of the past, and nobody's going to listen to the Qur'an, and nobody's going to pay attention to it. Even now, the Qur'an is completely discredited. The people say, oh, 1400 years old book, that was given to a man who was illiterate apparently. They completely put it down that it shouldn't be given any importance. So this is all a scheme. Allah says the people before also tried many plans tricks in order to lead people astray. Like for example, what is mentioned over here, Nimrud. What he did, he had a tower built. And he said, you know what, I'm going to go up and see where your God is. You say he's up, where is he? I'm going to go find out. If I see him, fine, we'll believe in him. If he's not there, we won't believe in him. What happened? That structure, Allah says it was destroyed from its foundation. So no matter what a person does to compete with the signs of Allah, with the word of Allah, He will only fail. Then on the day of resurrection, He will disgrace them and say, Where are my partners for whom you used to oppose the believers? Those who were given knowledge will say, Indeed, disgrace this day and evil are upon the disbelievers. The ones whom the angels take in death while wronging themselves. While they were doing something wrong, death came to them. And who then offers submission, saying, We were not doing any evil. They lie. But yes, indeed, Allah is knowing of what you used to do. So enter the gates of hell to abide eternally therein. And how wretched is the residence of the arrogant. 
You see, death is not termination. It doesn't mean that a person is now finished. Khalas. No, it means beginning of a new life in which there is either punishment or reward. Because over here, they were taken in death and then فَدُخُلُوا أَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمْ وَقِيلَ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ مَاذَا أَنزَلَ رَبُّكُمْ And it is said to those who fear Allah, what has your Lord sent down? What is their response? They say, قَالُوا خَيْرًا They say it is all good. It's not stories. It's not just stories. And it's not false. It's not myths. It's all good. The question is, what do you believe the Qur'an is? Ask yourself. When I am asked about the Qur'an, what do I say? What's the first thought that comes to my mind? Those who fear Allah, what is their instant reaction, their immediate response? It's good. Even if they come across an ayah that they don't understand? Yes. Even if they come across something that's very difficult for them to accept because culturally it's considered very not okay? Yes. قَالُوا خَيْرًا It's khair. It's all good. It's all good. Why? Because it's the word of Allah. The fact is that the more a person reflects on the Qur'an, the more he believes in it. And when he believes in it, it increases him in his conviction. So he follows it more strongly. And so, Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا فِي هَذِهِ الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً For those who do good in this world is good. Those who do good here, they will get good here as well. So never think that if you are going to do something for the sake of Allah and you're suffering, then that's it. No, you are going to receive good. I mean, think about it. Before Ramadan, you were eating every day. Alhamdulillah. Weren't you? But did you really enjoy that breakfast? Or that dinner? The way you enjoy your suhoor and your iftar now? You enjoy it more now. Why? Because Allah says that for the fasting person, there are two delights. One at the time when he will break his fast, and the other at the time when he will meet his Lord. So, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا Those people who do good in this life, for them is goodness here too. They are rewarded in this life also. So you will never suffer if you obey Allah. You will definitely be compensated. And also of course, وَلَا دَارُ الْآخِرَةِ خَيْرٍ And the home of the hereafter is better. That should be our goal. And how excellent is the home of the righteous. جَنَّاتُ adanin, Gardens of perpetual residence. Eternity. Which they will enter. Beneath which rivers flow. They will have therein whatever they wish. Those who pursue this world can never be truly happy. Why? Because in this world you can never have whatever you want. Nothing can be a hundred percent according to your wishes. Can it be? I mean, right now I wish something was not the way it is. And it can't be. This is how life is. So where is that place where everything will be according to your wishes? How you want it? Where? Only Jannah. لَهُمْ فِيهَا مَا يَشَاءُونَ كَذَلِكَ يَجْزِ اللَّهُ الْمُتَّقِينَ Thus does Allah reward the righteous. Who are the righteous? The ones whom the angels take in death, being good and pure. Meaning when the angels come to take their souls, cause them death, what condition are they in? Clean and pure. طَيِّبِينَ Clean in body, clean in mind, clean in their clothing. And the angels, when they come to them to take their souls away, they say, Salamun alaykum, peace be upon you. Udukhulul jannata bima kuntum ta'amalun. Enter paradise for what you used to do. For what you used to do. How important amal is. How important action is. What does this teach us? That it's not just about what we want. We have to do it also. So make dua for yourself that, Oh Allah, when the angels come to take my soul, they greet me with salam. They greet me with salam. You see, when somebody comes and the first thing they say to you is salam, you feel good. And if they come and they've just got a quiet, I mean face, closed mouth, they're not saying anything, you know that they're coming with bad news. So there are some people who, when the angels come to take them, they say salam to them. And salam means... Peace be on you, you're fine, you're good. And why? أُدْغُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ 
Do the disbelievers await anything except that the angels should come to them? Or there comes the command of your Lord. Thus did those do before them. And Allah wronged them not, but they had been wronging themselves. So they were struck by the evil consequences of what they did and were enveloped by what they used to ridicule. And those who associate others with Allah say, If Allah had willed, we would not have worshipped anything other than Him. Neither we nor our fathers, nor would we have forbidden anything through other than Him. Meaning, for their decisions, who is it that they are blaming? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah willed, we would never have done shirk. We would not have done it, our forefathers would not have done it. And if Allah wanted, we would not have changed the law of Allah. Allah says, thus did those do before them. Does this happen today also? Similar excuses? All the time. So is there upon the messengers except the duty of clear notification? The thing is that Allah has given choice to people, right? Do what you want. Here we're not forced. Allah allows many things to happen even though He does not like them. And we certainly sent into every nation a messenger saying, اُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ Worship Allah and avoid طَاغُوتِ And among them were those whom Allah guided, and among them were those upon whom error was deservedly decreed. So proceed through the earth and observe how was the end of the deniers. Even if you should strive for their guidance, O Prophet, indeed Allah does not guide those whom He sends astray, and they will have no helpers. And they swear by Allah, their strongest oaths, that Allah will not resurrect one who dies. So firm are they about their kufr. There is no resurrection, there is no afterlife. Does this happen today? Even more so. So confident are they about their disbelief. So confident. Allah says, but yes, meaning why would He not resurrect? It is a true promise binding upon Him, but most of the people do not know. It is so He will make clear to them the truth of that wherein they differ. And so those who have disbelieved may know that they were liars. Indeed, our word to a thing when we intend it is but that we say to it, be and it is. It is that easy for Allah to bring about the day of judgment. It's not difficult. He just has to say, be and it is. وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا فِي اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا And those who immigrated for the cause of Allah after they had been wronged, we will surely settle them in this world in a good place. But the reward of the hereafter is greater if only they could know. If they knew the reward of the hereafter, imagine the state of their happiness. Imagine how much more they would strive. You know like, when you know what is for iftar, does that give you sabr? Yeah? Gives you sabr, right? Like if your mom says, yeah, I know you guys have been fasting, you've been doing so well, I'll make this today. And what happens? You get sabr for that fast. So when a person knows the rewards that Allah has prepared in Jannah, then what happens? He gets sabr through this life also. الَّذِينَ sabaru وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ They are those who endured patiently and upon their Lord they relied. And we sent not before you except men to whom we revealed our message to. So ask the people of the message, if you do not know, we sent them with clear proofs and written ordinances and we revealed to you the message that you may make clear to the people what was sent down to them and that they might give thought. Allah revealed the Qur'an to who? To the Prophet ﷺ and instructed him to clarify to the people the Qur'an that was revealed. Meaning, Allah revealed the Qur'an. But who's going to show people how to act upon the Qur'an? Who was to show that? Who was to teach that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Through his words, through his actions, through his approvals. And this explanation of the Qur'an, what is that? It is the sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ, after all, he was the walking Qur'an. This is why it is necessary that we also believe in the hadith. And you see, the one who was given the Qur'an, he was more knowledgeable of the Qur'an than we are. Once a sahabi, Sa'id ibn Jubair, he was narrating to someone a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And the man said, well, the Qur'an says something different. So Sa'id ibn Jubair, he got so angry with him, he said, I am telling you about the words of the Prophet, and you are bringing the Qur'an against it? The Messenger of Allah knew the Book of Allah better than you. He knew the Book of Allah better than you. So the way he explained it, that is what we understand. Then, do those who have planned evil deeds feel secure that Allah will not cause the earth to swallow them or that the punishment will not come upon them from where they did not even perceive? A person should never ever feel fearless from Allah's wrath. 
The Prophet ﷺ said, In this ummah there shall be khasf, maskh, and qadaf. Collapsing of the earth, disfiguring of the faces. This is something that will become common. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, when is that? He said, when singing women, music, and drinking intoxicants spread. When these sins will spread, then such natural disasters will also become common. So do they feel secure? Or that he would not seize them during their usual activity and they could not cause failure? Or that he would not seize them gradually in a state of dread? But indeed, your Lord is kind and merciful. Have they not considered what things Allah has created? Their shadows incline to the right and to the left, prostrating to Allah while they are humble. And to Allah prostrates whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth, of creatures and the angels as well. And they are not arrogant. The fact is that when a servant is in the position of sujood, he is in the closest position he can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ said the nearest a servant comes to his Lord is when he is prostrating himself. So make supplication in this state. And sajda is the most beloved deed near Allah. The most beloved deed. Thawban radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet ﷺ about the act which was most loved by Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, عَلَيْكَ بِكَثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ عَلَيْكَ بِكَثْرَةِ السُّجُودِ Make frequent prostrations before Allah. For you will not make a single prostration except that it will raise you a degree because of it and remove a sin from you because of it. This is the benefit of sujood. What is it? One degree is raised and one sin is erased. So basically you're going two levels up in a way. Now these days what happens at night time, salah becomes so difficult. Qiyam becomes so difficult. Remember this hadith. With each sujood, insha'Allah, one sin is erased and one level is raised. يَخَافُونَ رَبَّهُمْ مِّن فَوْقِهِمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They fear their Lord above them and they do whatever they are commanded. And Allah has said, do not take for yourselves two deities. He is but one God, so fear only me. And to Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And to Him is due worship constantly. Then is it other than Allah that you fear? And whatever you have of favor, it is from Allah. Then when adversity touches you, to Him you cry for help. Then when He removes the adversity from you, at once a party of you associates others with their Lord, so they will deny what we have given them. Then enjoy yourselves, for you are going to know. And they assign to what they do not know a portion of that which we have provided them. By Allah, you will surely be questioned about what you used to invent. And they attribute to Allah daughters, exalted is He, and for them is what they desire. And when one of them is informed of the birth of a female, his face becomes dark dark and he suppresses grief. He hides himself from the people because of the ill which he has been informed of. Should he keep it in humiliation or bury it in the ground? Unquestionably, evil is what they decide. This jahili existed at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and unfortunately it exists still today. When somebody has a daughter, oh, nice. When somebody has a son, another son, wow, mashallah, congratulations. Unfortunately, these are some concepts that we do live with. Even if we don't come out with it openly, these are things that we think about. Daughters should not be disliked or looked down on. The Prophet ﷺ said, Do not dislike daughters, for indeed they are friendly and worth importance. This is an authentic hadith from Silsilatul Ahadith al-Sahiha. Because I'm sure you've never heard it before. لا تكره البنات فإنهن المؤنسات الغاليات They are friendly. And I mean, if you think about it, when you have a girl in the house and a boy in the house, which one is more lively? (laughs) Girls, right? And he said they are worth importance. But what happens? Girls, they are told, oh, you're going to get married one day. Why bother spending on you? Indirectly, girls are treated like this. You're only here for a few days. You can share your bedroom with your sister. But your brother, oh, he has to have his own bedroom. This kind of bias... It's there in our family. Why? Because we look down on daughters. The Prophet ﷺ forbade us from doing that. For those who do not believe in the hereafter is the description of evil. And for Allah is the highest attribute. And He is the exalted in might, the wise. And if Allah were to impose blame on the people for their wrongdoing, He would not have left upon the earth any creature, but He defers them for a specified term. And when their term has come, they will not remain behind an hour, nor will they precede it. The Prophet ﷺ said, 
no place is decreed for someone to die in except that it is made beloved to him and there is some need of his placed in it. So he goes there and when he goes there, he dies there. And they attribute to Allah that which they dislike. And their tongues assert the lie that they will have the best from him. Assuredly, they will have the fire and they will be there and neglected. By Allah, we did certainly send messengers to nations before you. But shaitan made their deeds attractive to them. And he is the disbeliever's ally today as well. And they will have a painful punishment. And we have not revealed to you the book, O Messenger, except for you to make clear to them that wherein they have differed. And as guidance and mercy for a people who believe Leave. And Allah has sent down rain from the sky and given life thereby to the earth after its lifelessness. Indeed in that is a sign for people who listen. Surah An-Nahl Bismillahirrahmanirrahim